part of um, been working on it for the last four and a half years. Um, what a wonderful day that we have to thank goodness, right? Um, such a sunny day. Um, I really appreciate all of you coming um, today. Um, we have a great program and so blessed that to have all of um, you here today. So with that, we'd like to um, start with the national anthem. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Marler, the director of the Iowa Department of Transportation. Thank you for joining us here today. We made it. We made it. Today, yes, today we celebrate nearly 25 years of planning, coordination, and hard work that has made this River Bridge project a reality. This exceptional structure represents the single largest transportation project in the history of Iowa and is a testament to what can be accomplished when we work together towards a common goal. From the visionaries who imagine a safer, more efficient connection between our states, to the leaders who publicly championed the project and made resources available, to the workers, and there were a lot of them, an average of 450 per day, in fact, who shown up for more than four years, rain or shine, sleet or snow, to the DOT staff who spent countless hours on the development design, programming, and administration of the project, to the Iowa Transportation Commission and the local, state, and federal partners who worked tirelessly with Iowa and Illinois DOTs to bring this project to life, and to you, our communities, that were instrumental in guiding the vision for this historic endeavor that remains steadfast every step of the way, patiently working through the detours, the occasional delays, and yes, even the zipper merge, to all of you, I say thank you and congratulations on a job well done. As I stand here under the iconic basket handle arches that serve as a landmark for this area, I'm reminded of the less visible features that will help this bridge stand the test of time. Features like the use of stainless steel in many of the structural components, bridge health sensors to inform of maintenance needs, 
walkways, access points, motorized inspection elements, a separated multi-use path offering pedestrians and cyclists a rare connection over the Mississippi River, and a unique scenic overlook where people can stop and enjoy the world-class view. While these features make for an amazing structure, we must remember we have all overcome many challenges to get to this point. A particularly frigid and icy winter, record flooding on the Mississippi River, two years of construction during a global pandemic. We have powered through all of these challenges together to create a gateway that bridges the states of Iowa and Illinois, one that is connected, that's iconic, that's handcrafted, and that creates, creates opportunities for those in our communities and beyond. This new I-74 Mississippi River Bridge will join our states and communities, will strengthen our region, and will stand tall in welcoming new hope and opportunity to the Quad Cities and beyond for many years to come. At this time, I would like to read a statement from the Honorable Kim Reynolds, Governor of Iowa, who regrets being unavailable in person today. She asked that I read a statement on her behalf. In June 2017, coalitions from the Quad Cities neighboring states eagerly gathered nearby to break ground on what would become one of the most significant transportation initiatives in Iowa's history. Today, we celebrate the successful completion of the I-74 River Bridge and anticipate its opening to travelers. While a family commitment made more than a year ago prevents me from being, being with you in person, please accept my heartfelt gratitude and congratulations on a job well done. This bridge represents the culmination of meticulous planning and tireless work by officials in Iowa and Illinois at the state, county, and city levels. Numerous contractors, planning and design partners, and hundreds of tradesmen and workers whose craftsmanship will remain on display here for decades. I want to thank my team, Director Scott Marler, the Iowa Department of Transportation, and the Iowa Transportation Commission, along with my colleagues, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and Secretary Omar Osman from the Illinois Department of Transportation for their leadership and partnership throughout this project. I also want to acknowledge and thank the legislators from both states who have supported this effort over a span of nearly 25 years. An undertaking of this magnitude takes the cooperation of many groups, all of which are deserving of our recognition, including the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration, Scott and Rock Island counties, the cities of Davenport, Bettendorf, Molin, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Coast Guard and the Rock Island Arsenal, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and countless others. This type of cooperation between all levels of government and the public and private sectors deserves to be acknowledged and commended. The $1 billion investment in our transportation network is the largest project of this type in Iowa's history and reminds us all of what is possible when our states, communities, and people come together to get things done. Iowa has deep roots in agriculture and manufacturing. Strong transportation routes are essential in getting goods to market and helping to feed the world. This new bridge will serve as a vital east-west link for the Midwest. It provides exceptional opportunities to strengthen the economies of Iowa and Illinois and improve regional and global options for moving goods produced in each of our states. The I-74 River Bridge illustrates the promise of our states and the Quad City communities to all who travel across it. I am thrilled that this majestic bridge will be here for generations to come, helping to bring that promise to fruition. Sincerely, Kim Reynolds, Governor of the State of Iowa. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. Now I would like to invite Josh Millard, representative for Congresswoman Marion. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I appreciate that introduction. My name is Josh Millard. Uh, I am the district representative for Congresswoman Marion at Miller Meeks. Uh, I'm so thankful to be here today 
and I appreciate the invite and the, the great graciousness which has been given to me. Um, so thank you again for having us here on this beautiful December day. Um, in 1856, a bridge just down the river uh, connecting Davenport and Rock Island became the first bridge to cross the Mississippi River. And today we are here to dedicate a new bridge connecting the Quad Cities. Continuing on the legacy of excellence and innovation that, is, that this community has shown forever. Years and years will go by, generations will come and go, but this bridge will stand as a reminder and a symbol of the hard work, dedication, and perseverance the Quad Cities community and the Quad Cities people have shown with this project. We are proud to see the various agencies, groups, and organizations cooperate to make this vision a reality. Both Iowans and Illinoisans rely on sound infrastructure to move our ag products and manufactured goods, as well as to connect with family, business partners, and critical service providers. So once again, Thank you for having me, and congratulations to everyone who has worked so hard on this iconic landmark. And now I'd like to introduce the Illinois DOT Secretary, Omar Osman. Good morning. Good morning, and, and thank, you, thank you for coming out today as we close an important chapter in the history of this region and embark on a new one. And yes, I am the Illinois Transportation Secretary Omar Osman. On behalf of the entire team at the Illinois Department of Transportation, I welcome you all to this beautiful part of Illinois on the Mississippi River. I would like to give a special thanks to the wonderful mayors and residents here in the Quad Cities who have lived through our dust these last few years. Their patience is rewarded today. I would also like to express my gratitude to the elected federal, state, and local officials and the multitude of project supporters who are here with us today. I need to acknowledge the contribution of someone very special in the audience. Our former U.S. Transportation Secretary, Ray LaHood. Thank you. Secret Secretary LaHood is from my home area in Peoria, Illinois, and he was instrumental, as we all know, in getting federal funding secured for this project. And I would like to say a heartful thank you to all of the project team members from Iowa and Illinois who played a key role in building these magnificent uh, uh, structures. Clearly, you have put all your energies into a job well done. Today marks a historic occasion for the Quad Cities. We are officially dedicating the new I-74 Mississippi River Bridge, one of the largest that we stand on represents IDOT and the governor's commitment to building a 21st century system of infrastructure in Illinois. None of this would have been possible without the extensive community input we received during the planning process and the critical support we received from our partners during construction. But we move into a new era. We leave behind another one. The original bridge at this location opened in 1935 as a toll bridge. It served the region very well, but it is best days were in the past. Thanks to the vision and the leadership of Governor Prisker and our General Assembly, Illinois in, 19, in, in 2019 passed the largest and first multimodal capital program in state history, Rebuild Illinois. Since then, I have had the privilege of attending many events like this up and down our state to celebrate investment 
in transportation infrastructure in places like Peoria, Joliet, Champaign, Urbana, Collinsville, Chicago, and many, many others. The common threat running through these events that continues here today is the importance of connecting communities and providing the infrastructure that will help create jobs at the local level. While safety is certainly a major part of this project, and I know tales about the tight squeeze to get across the old bridge are actually legendary, it is much more than that. Today, we are creating a gateway. Projects such as this one can create opportunities for long-term economic growth and provide the foundation for job creation for our children in the communities where they grew up. Bridges such as the one we will open in a few days help us maintain a quality of life and get us where we need to go safely each and every day. One bridge can connect communities, get you to a job, and keep you and your family safe. That is, that is vital to the health and well-being of our two states. Today is just the start of great things to come for the Quad Cities. I am honored to be a part of today's festivities, none of which would be possible without the total support of our governor, someone who truly understand the value of inf investing in infrastructure, community, and people. And without further delay, I would like to introduce our governor, governor of the uh, state of Illinois, J.B. Prisker. Express a, a special note of gratitude uh, to all of you uh, who have served on Omer Osman's team for many years now, um, and particularly who've been involved, at least for the state of Illinois, for the last two and a half years in rebuilding and restoring Illinois' infrastructure. Uh, today, I'm very proud to celebrate our partnership, Iowa and Illinois. Our partnership with the Iowa Department of Transportation has been just tremendous. I thank you. I thank the leaders, I thank everybody that has worked on this project, who lives here in Iowa, all the folks on the Illinois side. This has been a tremendous work for everybody and for the good of our society. I want to say a special note of gratitude to my friend Doug House, who is the Deputy Secretary of Transportation in Illinois. He is retiring at the end of this month, and I thank you for your service. I also want to acknowledge the leadership of our great former Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood, uh, who was mentioned earlier, but I just want you to know, after serving many years as a congressperson, uh, fighting for transportation dollars to bring them home here to the Midwest, he then went on as Secretary of Transportation to do so for the entire country. We acknowledge and thank you for your service to our nation. I also, of course, want to recognize the many elected public servants from both sides of the Mississippi River. I know that uh, Governor Reynolds could not join us today, but there are many others who have been able to, representatives from state and county and local governments in Iowa and Illinois alike. Our friendship and our common goals are anchored in giving our state's families and businesses greater opportunity. This project is precisely designed to do that. The I-74 Mississippi River Bridge has long been a critical east-west link in the nation's transportation network, serving as the region's primary crossing point of the Mississippi. And it's a corridor that's vital to the future of the Quad Cities. Alongside our Iowan and federal partners, we're taking a critical piece of infrastructure that has been mainly untouched since 1960 and turning it into a centerpiece that residents deserve. 
with the creation of four lanes, two full-sized shoulders, a scenic pedestrian path. These improvements will not only support the movement of commercial traffic across the Mississippi River, but will make day-to-day -day driving and day-to-day -day living safer for Quad City families. While this achievement while this achievement is a cross-state collaboration, I'm proud that our state's $45 billion Rebuild Illinois initiative has enabled major projects like the I-74 bridge to continue as we tackle even more infrastructure projects across the river in Illinois. In the Quad Cities alone, Rebuild Illinois is restoring the I-280 bridge, improving the Quad Cities International Airport, and building a new Rock Island location for the YWCA. All projects that will make this region more resilient. On top of that, with $17 billion from President Biden's infrastructure plan that's coming to the state of Illinois, more outstanding improvements are still to come. It's progress that couldn't be possible without the high quality workforce in this community and its leaders including Tri-City Buildings Trades Council President Corey Bergfeld and Executive Director Jerry Lack. Brian Akins with the Iron Workers. Uh, Marshall Douglas with the Operating Engineers. Jeff Deppie with the Laborers. And Brent Ganahl with the Carpenters. The tradesmen and women who are building these massive important structures for all of us deserve our thanks and I hope you'll all give them a big round of applause. Today is proof that Illinois and Iowa are laying the foundations for safer and shorter commutes, working together with not just Iowa and our, but our, also our other neighbors to connect our economies we're creating and sustaining hundreds of thousands of jobs as a result of the investments that are being made in infrastructure. It's a win for businesses and people in Illinois. It's a win for the businesses and people of Iowa and for the entire Midwest. Thank you, all of you, for joining us today. And with that, I'm very pleased to introduce someone whose leadership in Congress has helped make this project possible. And that's our great representative, Sherry Bustos. Good morning, everybody. You should see it from up here, let me tell you. Um, what a glorious day here, 68 feet to the inch that we are standing and sitting above the Mississippi River the most iconic river in the world. And as of this week, we have a new way to cross it. How glorious is that? But let me begin, let me begin by taking off where Governor Pritzker started. He was thanking the leaders of the building trades. Let's drill down a little bit more and thank those workers of the building trades that made all this happen. The iron workers, operating engineers, laborers, cement masons, carpenters, electrical workers, teamsters, painters, elevator constructors, they made this happen. These jobs, my friends, cannot be outsourced. Thank you for each and every one of them for working beneath the water, on top of the water, and in the air for the last four years. We're grateful to each and every one of them. This is a proud day here in the Quad Cities. I still remember uh, Sangeetha Rayapati, the, the mayor of, of Moline, was talking about how she used to travel across the bridge. And I remember 36 years ago, almost to the month, when I first crossed that bridge, I was a brand new reporter at the Quad City Times. I was driving from my little bitty apartment in Moline, Illinois, and I was white knuckling it at 55 miles an hour from the on-ramp to the off-ramp. That's how scary it was. I was scared to start my new job, but I can tell you I was even more scared to drive over that. 
Uh, the bridge is um, a little bit older. I'm a little bit older now. But today, all of that changes. Eight lanes, eight lanes from Illinois to Iowa, back and forth. This really is the connector of the Quad Cities. Um, on another personal note, I live, you can see my place right over there. I live on River Drive in Moline. And my husband and I like to walk along Ben Butterworth Parkway. And, and I had a habit of counting the cranes as this was being built. Because I knew that with every one of those cranes, and especially when we would get to those double digit number of cranes, they were jobs. There was an, and just like our ancestors must have been over the moon 86 years ago, when that first opened, our great grandchildren and our great great grandchildren and our great great grandchildren will be equally proud of what we've been able to announce here today. And just like America itself, we had a vision here in the Quad Cities and in Iowa and in Illinois. We came together, we innovated, and we delivered. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. I'm equally proud that just about a week ago, President Biden signed into law a $1.2 trillion infrastructure where we're going to see projects like this all over the country. Thank you very much. I'm excited for what we all have ahead of us here in the Quad Cities. And it is my honor to introduce Tim Marshall, who is the Iowa Division Administrator with the Federal Highway Administration. Tim. Thank you, Representative Bustos, and uh, thank you to uh, all of you for inviting me to help celebrate the opening of this incredible bridge, this incredible structure, an important part to our local community. Uh, first of all, I'd like to also extend my uh, thank you to those who plan this great event. Um, it's a lot of work that goes into planning events like these and to make sure all the um, infrastructure is in place and safety is in place. So thank you very much. And then also to all those who are here in attendance are actually participating in this event. Thank you all for, for making the time to, to come here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim Marshall. I am the Division Administrator for the Iowa Division of the Federal Highway Administration, and it's my honor to say some remarks on behalf of the entire Federal Highway Administration. Uh, like you've heard many other speakers say, to put it lightly, this was a significant team effort, and FHWA was excited to partner with many federal, state, and local agencies to deliver such a successful project. Multiple stakeholders were involved in this project, including the Iowa and Illinois Departments of Transportation, the Quad Cities, or I should say the Bi-State uh, Planning Commission, uh, the local governments, federal and state resource agencies, as well as industry. Uh, this project required great teamwork from all players involved, and the, and the original project concep conception was thought about over 20 years ago. Uh, today. This project is very important on a national, regional, and local level. It increases capacity for the national regional transportation and freight, freight network, helping to expedite the throughput of moving people, goods, including the all-important bike and pedestrian lane that, that's besides us. Um, providing connection across the Mississippi River to all these communities. This project not only benefits our great country's overall infrastructure, but it brings a unique signature landmark to the local community. This basket handle arch bridge is a unique, one-of-a-kind structure. The bridge construction uses innovative construction materials and methods and has an extremely resilient design life of 100 years. I'm proud to say that there was a significant federal investment that went into this bridge. About 80% of the cost of this bridge was uh, federal funds. So today, it's, it's about $800 million out of the $1 billion spent with a little bit more to come. Uh, the project represents a great federal investment, not only in this project, but as Representative Bustos put it, our new bipartisan infrastructure law that was just signed into law recently is hopefully going to bring a lot more money to build equally important projects just like this to this local area as well as all over the country. 
Uh, the Federal Highway Administration is leading the charge in, in, in implementing the bipartisan infrastructure, infrastructure law. Uh, we just set up a new public website that's available uh, through the FHWA website. Please, I encourage you all to visit it, but as we work on implementation and come up with fact sheets and different uh, new program guides, all the information is going to hit that website first. So if you, want, if you want to be the first one to see it, please go ahead and search for that and, and, and view that information. So in closing, uh, I want to say congratulations to all of you involved in, in delivering such a great and amazing project. I'm amazing. I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this amazing team. I'm excited to see so many people from different, diverse backgrounds come together to deliver a landmark project. All of you here had a part in it, but there are so many other people that had a part in this project that were not able to attend today. So my hats are off to you all. So with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Bob, Mr. Bob Gallagher, the mayor for the city of Bettendorf. What an honor and privilege it is to be here today to represent the city of Bettendorf on this wonderful occasion. Today we have a great celebration and I thank you all for being here. It's a beautiful day, so thank you to those who ordered up the weather in the planning committee. You guys have done an awesome job. You know, ribbon cutting is historically a ceremony, opening a brand new business or an amenity to a community. Boy, do we have a new amenity to look at today. This is an awesome amenity for our community. So thank you all for being here to celebrate. We're joined by so many dignitaries here today. Thank you very much for coming to celebrate with us. We all appreciate your attendance and your remarks on this historic occasion. Thanks also to the other mayors you're going to hear speak, but the city staffs and all of those who had a hand in making not only today's celebration happen, but the 30 years of work to bring this project to fruition. Thank you. Many of those former mayors are with us. Awesome work by them and their staffs. This morning I had the privilege to reminisce a little bit about the history of cooperation among the entire region to bring this project from concept phase through construction. Lots of work on both sides of the river. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, the first project started right behind you, up at 53rd Street and I-74. To accomplish this initial phase, we worked with the city of Davenport, our friends that uh, preceded Mayor Madsen, uh, and the Department of Transportation for the state of Iowa to prepare that interchange for the coming changes in the corridor and to accommodate the three lanes of bridge traffic, matching the Illinois Department of Transportation plan to three-lane I-74 from the river to John Deere Road. Communities working together. <clears throat> Thank you to our local engineers who have helped to design and implement this project, our friends from IMAG and Shive Hattery, who you'll get to hear at the waterfront this afternoon, provide some remarks on their experience. Thanks to the contractors, the local construction experts, and all who worked on this wonderful project through a record-setting flood, a derecho, and a polar vortex, not to mention a pandemic. You delivered a wonderful bridge today. Great men and women provided great work. Let's give them another round of applause. The reliability, connectivity, and safety this bridge will provide for decades to come will change the face of this area and create much needed catalysts for economic development. You're already seeing that economic development taking place in the city of Bettendorf and behind me in Moline. We're excited to experience this development in anticipation for this wonderful bridge opening. The bike paths, elevators, and Overlook Point will give us the rare opportunity to experience a multi-use path on an interstate bridge. Not to mention its connectivity with the Mississippi River Trail and the American Discovery Trail that cross and intersect right here in the community of the Quad Cities. People will come from all over to visit us here, to walk or ride across the Mississippi River and take a look at the observation point, and we can't wait to welcome them. 
Great things are coming as a result of this historic project. <clears throat> and we're so happy to be able to celebrate it today. We at the city of Bettendorf are very pleased and honored to be included in today's celebration. Thank you. Now, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker, the mayor of Moline, Illinois, Sangeetha Rayapati. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure and privilege to be here today representing the city of Moline. And, and thank all who had the forethought to envision this bridge, the skill and strength to fund it, and the expertise to execute plans and build this key piece of transportation infrastructure in the Quad Cities. The support of government officials, our community, workers and our local union contractors means so much. And those workers, we so much appreciate your skill, sweat, and dedication to quality and safety that have brought this project to fruition. It goes without saying that an abundant spirit of collaboration and cooperation shaped this effort. And for that, we in the city of Moline are immensely grateful. This project opens a wealth of possibilities and opportunities here in the Quad Cities. We have the possibility for a future marked by increased connectivity, commerce, and quality of place. This bridge also offers a once-in-a-generation opportunity to refresh our downtown Moline, opening a new era of commerce, housing, and tourist experiences that will redefine what it means to live in or visit the Quad Cities. And that same spirit of collaboration and cooperation we've seen in this bridge project will carry us through this new phase of development. So today is a wonderful day to celebrate. Today we look back on what it took to get here with thanks, and we look forward with hope and expectation for the future. Today we acknowledge a new future that is possible for our families and businesses, one that beckons us to continue on the path of transformational change for the betterment of us all. Thank you again for being here and for whatever you personally did to support this magnificent project. Enjoy this momentous day. And it is now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Mayor of Davenport, Mike Matson. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming out today and being here on behalf of the city of Davenport and the 101,000 members uh, and the 450,000 citizens, members of this great Quad Cities. Thank you for coming to this historic event. You know, there's a, there's a state south of here that kind of thinks they set the standard for an arch or an arch type uh, uh, thing, but thanks to the trades and, and the workers in this community, I think we now have the standard that's set uh, for arches and iconic things along the Mississippi, and let's give them, Congresswoman, my friends, mayors, colleagues, this is a momentous occasion, and thank you for coming. This sets the standard for cooperation. We talk about in the Quad Cities that we come together, we work together, and we collaborate, collaborate together. The, the mantra for what we do in the Quad Cities uh, and the five uh, cities and all the cities that are on the, uh, the surrounding areas of the Quad Cities is partnerships, teamwork, and collaboration. If this isn't the example of doing that for decades, and a special thanks to our city administrators in all of our cities that, that do the work and, and the, the people under them, the department heads that come together to actually execute and the plans that are, are put in place by some of us, uh, they're the ones. Let's give them a special thanks also. So again, as this standard is set today and for the future and how to build a bridge, how to do an arch, how to set the example for the Quad Cities, the city of Davenport thanks you for the collaboration, the work, and the iconic historic event that we're doing here in years to come. Thank you very much. And I'll be followed by my friend from Rock Island, another mayor, Mike, uh, Tomes, who we talk about right now. We look around and have a great view of the Quad Cities, the river, but he's got the best view in the Quad Cities. He gets to look at Davenport every day. Uh. 
You know, Mayor, you don't have too bad a view either, and we're continuing to make that uh, even better. So thank you. And the, the view is great across the whole Quad Cities. You know, I'm going to steal a little quote uh, from a good friend of mine, Decker Plain, city manager uh, of uh, Bettendorf, but yeah, baby, we made it. And the optimal word there is we. There you go back there, Deck. The optimal word is we. And you've heard it several from several speakers here, but that's really what it's about is we. We, the Quad Cities, the citizens of Quad Cities, have made this happen. You know, we've had the help from the federal government and the states and, the, and, 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 and of course, the local governments, but it started here locally. The movement started locally, going to Washington, D.C., going to the states, and asking for this project to happen. It took a long time, but it happened because everybody had the patience, the persistence to make it happen. And so once again, I got to say, with that, thank you to we, to everyone here, all the leaders, all the citizens willing to put up with this. You know, there's been some diversions around town here, and Rock Island thanks you for that. When there was some diversions, Rock Island's traffic picked up, and we uh, had some economic development and, and economic stimulus, and that was wonderful. And that's another thing this is about, economic development. They've talked about it a little bit, but the, uh, the skilled workers that were on this project, well-paid, well-deserved, but they spend the money here. The people that come visit, the tourism, will use this bridge and help the economic development here in the Quad Cities. And it helps us develop and get motivated to do bigger and better things. And so in turn, once again, that helps the community as a whole. So even though this project touches Bettendorf and Moline, it really touches from every corner of the Quad Cities and on. And so we thank everybody for that. Once again, as I mentioned, the skilled workers, and, and you've heard this before, but can't thank those individuals enough. They put up with a lot, as you've heard, with the pandemic and the cold and the floods, et cetera. And we just, they, they, they're so skilled that we're blessed that they have great training programs and leaders around here to make this happen. And we have the quality workers in town to make this happen. It helped a lot of families in economic development. I'd also like to thank, uh, I'll say at this point to Rock Island, the past mayors involved in this project, Mark Schriebert and Dennis Pauley, and the city councils uh, in Rock Island that were part of this when it began. So I get to be blessed and honored to be here for the ribbon cutting and the opening of it, but really the hard work has been done and been doing, being done uh, in past years. So it's not just the individuals that are here today. We can't forget everybody involved in the past. And I guess in last uh, in, in lasting, you know, this I guess is going to become maybe, I don't know if it's a tra tradition or what, but my father and aunt that are in the audience here, Stu Tomes and Larray Kendall, actually we're part of the ribbon cutting for the Centennial Bridge from Davenport to Rock Island. Uh, so I guess I get to be involved in this ribbon cutting. I don't know if this is setting the trend for generations and my kids have something to look forward to maybe also someplace. But uh, so I want to thank them, community leaders from the past. But uh, so I just want to put that little personal touch on it and, of course, uh, everybody. So once again, to keep this moving forth and get to the ribbon cutting, thank you, everybody, for what they've done. I would now, it's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable and my friend, Reggie Freeman, the mayor of East Moline. Good afternoon, good morning, afternoon, where we're we at here. I think you've heard all the speakers from this morning and here today. And, you know, what do I say? Ditto. Thank you very much. No. No, I want to thank you that uh, we've been speaking about all day today. It's about the old green bridge over here. And we heard, yes, 1935. 1935, and we're talking about this morning about how we are going to move vehicles, we're going to move pedestrians, we're going to move bikes. But back in 1935, when this bridge was built for $6 million, they bought people across that bridge, and horse and carts, dogs, and so forth, and walkers. So that was the purpose of the 
Iowa, Illinois Memorial Bridge. And then several years later, in 1959, the other span was built because the traffic increases and so forth. So what are we looking at today? From 4,000 vehicles going across that bridge when it was first built years ago to today to somewhere around, they're saying 80,000 cars a day, we've come a long ways, baby. We've come a long ways. So I just want to thank again, like I said, you've heard several things this morning about thanking everyone. And we need right at this moment to put our hands together for everyone. Thank you very much.